I can't keep it a secret anymore. That was exactly the point, Maddie. I didn't want you to complete your class assignment. I wanted to confuse you, to disorient you. Oh, you can't even imagine how much fun I had in the internet control room, sending you to all these websites. I managed to send you anywhere I liked. <laughs> It was a piece of cake to confuse Maddie. I managed to plant lots of misleading information in her way. Remember when I sent her to Mr. Sherlemond? How good it would have been if he'd managed to sell her a holiday. Mr. Sherlemond could have lured her with the swimming pool, the bikes, the fun. Oh, he wasn't even a real travel agent. He made a bogus website. Uh, the plan was to show Maddie all these beautiful places and offers he couldn't provide. My trusted assistant spread misinformation on the internet every day about things that do not exist. The other day, they even managed to rent a beautiful house online to some innocent people. How gullible they are. The house was fake. Thank you, Mr. Charlemond. At your service, Miss Mason. Did you call me? I can normally sell anything to families who are desperate for a holiday. It's actually very easy for me, as I paid extra to get listed on the first page of results when people search on the internet. People just type in the name of a country and I'm there. They don't even notice that my website is a paid advert. But this time, I'm sorry, I didn't manage to live up to your expectations. That girl was too clever. Oh, just leave it, Mr. Sherlemond. It makes me sad. Perhaps my first link didn't perform as expected, but I wasn't going to give up so easily. I had already made plans to send Maddie to Mrs. Canabera. Mrs. Canabera is actually a very good and accurate science teacher. For a moment, you thought I was turning good, didn't you? Well, apparently not. Some of the facts that Mrs. Canabera gave Maddie were actually accurate, but Maddie didn't need information about the seismic waves. She just wanted to know about the people and culture of Kayoni. Exactly. I wanted to help Maddie, but when I wear my knowledge hat and someone visits my website, I just have to give them the scientific information I know. But then something happened to my hat, and I started speaking about a fake story. Lemurs can't help tourists to find their way on the island. Someone must have hacked my website. Other weird stories were coming out of my mouth. For example, drop bears in Australia do not exist. <laughs> They're just a story for a laugh. For April Fool's Day, check the facts out. So, I didn't mean to confuse Maddie, and I hope that she will visit my website again, perhaps when she's a bit older. This is because the information on my website is not appropriate for her age. She got very confused by the scientific terms. Seismic waves, vibrations, waves of energy. They would be very good for scientists to identify the location of an earthquake, but not for Maddie. <sighs> yeah, yeah, whatever. Very interesting, Mrs. Canabera. Actually, Miss Canabera, I was okay with that and especially happy with the drop bear story. But you managed to make Maddie go to the library website in the end because she wanted to know and understand more about the things you told her. That annoyed me a lot. Thinking about it again, I can say with certainty that it was the worst incident for me. That obnoxious librarian has a 24 online chat service. What a disaster was about to happen. You could get the right information. Catastrophe. Listen, Miss Mason, or should I call you Miss Confusion now? That's your real name, isn't it? 
I'm going to pick you out bit by bit from the internet. I'm going to crash your ambition to spread lies, half-truths and challenge real facts. I'm spreading good information on the internet. Whatever. You can't fight me. You will fail. I have so many assistants on the internet. You have no hope. I have too many people to help me. By the way, remember, I managed to stop you that day anyway. You didn't manage to send Maddie to the new volume of the encyclopedia. She would have learned a lot of useful information about Kayoni. That would have been a disaster for me, so I had to stop you. Maddie almost caught me there. She started becoming suspicious because of you. However, I saved the day by sending her to the online community youth discussion forum. What I didn't tell her though was that most of the members were, in fact, internet trolls. And they liked to spread misinformation. They were there to distort information by posting wrong facts and fake news. The more facts they spread, the more gain and profit they could make. The problem was that girl, that horrible girl, Betty. She was there as an insider to sabotage the group. She was the only one who spread good information and facts. She had her own website with good information and advice. She calls it her blog. She wanted people to see both sides of the story. What a delusional girl. If only Maddie had arrived 15 minutes earlier to meet my trusted misinformation group, she would have developed a different view about the wind farms. Betty's voice wouldn't have been strong enough. Maddie would only get one point of view, and she would believe that wind farms are the most evil thing on the face of the earth. Well, the online discussion forum trolls didn't manage to mislead Maddie, as I was here. And you failed, Miss Mason. I was here to save the day. I gave Maddie both sides of the story. I made her think critically about the information. Face it, your plan was ruined. You think you are very clever, don't you? Congratulations. But you're forgetting that after you, I sent Maddie to the Bold Voice. You wanted to send her to a good newspaper. What a joke. Maddie doesn't know that different newspapers present information differently. So I sent her to my uncle. He is the master of deception. He can twist and turn the truth by showing only one side. Thank you, Miss Rothney Mason. I gave some facts to Maddie. Some were actually true. Wind turbines do kill birds. Of course, not lemurs. However, I mixed some true with a few lies to make it more effective. And I presented only one side, the view of the people who were influenced negatively by the wind turbines. I like to do this with a lot of things. My favourite one, for example, is the topic of vaccination. You should have asked me about that, not about boring Kayoni. But this girl is probably learning a lot of things at school about the importance of research and scientific information. Miss Rothney Mason, your plan has failed this time. <laughs> Miss Rothney Mason, you just like twisting and turning things, even your own name. Oh, come on, Andy, you're becoming a bit obnoxious now. Is this how you treat your niece? Everyone is here now. They've heard the story. You've revealed yourself to all the school.